Hey, what's up guys? Brad with the Squared Away Everyday Channel. And today we're gonna be taking a look at IFS vehicles or independent front suspension vehicles versus solid front axle vehicles or SFA vehicles or otherwise known as live axle vehicles. But for the sake of the video, we're gonna call it IFS vehicles versus SFA vehicles. And there we go, we've got that out of the way. Now, in terms of the actual video quality, uh, this is gonna be a great video for you, but I'm not so much feeling the B-roll and all that other shit, so I'm probably not gonna roll that in, but this video will be quick and dirty, and it's gonna be concise and to the point, so I hope you dig it. If you haven't had a chance yet, please go ahead and like the video if you end up digging it and sub to the channel, that would be awesome. Now, let's talk about independent front suspension. What is independent front suspension anyway? IFS looks like this. If we have both front wheels and we're going over uneven terrain, here's how it's gonna look. We hit uneven terrain on this side, ba boom, ba boom, nothing happens over here. It doesn't have to. We hit uneven terrain on the other side, ba boom, ba boom, nothing happens over here. It didn't have to. Now we hit a big rock, ba boom, ba boom, both can react. But essentially what that means is neither wheel has to react to the other one necessarily, and they move independently of each other when they're traveling over uneven terrain. Now, a solid front axle vehicle looks like this. We're hitting uneven terrain, ba boom, ba boom. We're hitting uneven terrain, ba boom, ba boom. And now we're hitting a big rock where both have to react, ba boom, ba boom. Okay, so essentially the solid front axle is connected. It's always going to affect the other wheel. It's a solid front axle. Whereas the independent front suspension, boom, 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 it moves separately of one another. Okay, I hope I explained that well enough. Now, why do we give a shit? What is the difference between a IFS and a SFA in terms of pros and cons? Well, an IFS vehicle is a modern type of suspension for the front end. They do do IRS suspension now. Some trucks are moving to independent rear suspension, which uh, they're on a macro view. All of the stuff I'm going to talk about is going to apply, okay? but we're just talking about IFS in this video. Now, IFS is great because you have all these little parts dialed into the suspension. You can adjust the suspension all these different ways. You can get great alignment, all that kind of stuff. It's awesome. We'll talk about that in a second. So what are the pros of the IFS? Well, they're gonna have better handling. They'll be more comfortable. And in general, they're gonna have better road manners versus an SFA vehicle. They're just easier to drive, driving around town, driving on the highway. The handling of them is much, much better. Now, because the parts are smaller, it's gonna be a lighter weight system. So you're, you've got a significant weight savings there in the IFS vehicle. And then on top of that, just given the way that the suspension is built, we've got the suspension coming out each wheel. They can suck up the front diff into the guts of the truck so that you have better ground clearance, which is awesome. You get better clearance with an IFS vehicle versus an SFA, generally speaking. Okay, so there's the pros for an IFS vehicle. Now, the pros of an SFA. Well, like we talked about, uh, or maybe what you just kind of determined from what I was talking about there, is they have less parts than an IFS vehicle, and they're gonna be typically more robust than an IFS vehicle. So it's gonna be stronger, it's gonna be able to carry more weight. IFS, or I'm sorry, SFA vehicles just inherently are designed to carry more weight and carry it better, which is why trucks, when you're looking at any sort of truck, nowadays they're actually starting to move to IRS rear ends, independent rear suspension, but there's a lot of trucks, most trucks still have a independent rear suspension, or I'm sorry, a solid rear suspension, and it's because it works better for workloads, carrying heavy loads, all that kind of stuff. So SFA, in a nutshell, they're a lot more robust. Uh, they're typically gonna have a heavier duty frame because they're typically built for heavier loads. And most importantly, the flex on a solid front axle vehicle is much better. So we're going over rough terrain, here's your solid front axle. When we're going over rough terrain, you're gonna have really good flex as you're climbing over uneven terrain. And what that translates into when you're going off road is that the cab of the vehicle, it will allow the cab of the vehicle to travel through that uneven terrain more level, okay? Which is what you want. So that's essentially what the pros and cons are. Let me look at my notes, make sure I'm not missing anything on either of these. No, that's pretty much it on both of them. So in a nutshell, IFS, you've got a better handling, easier to drive, lighter weight, more clearance vehicle. On a SFA vehicle, you've got a heavier duty, stronger 
built front suspension and it's gonna have a lot more flex into it. Now, if we get into the little nuances of it, like let's talk about even the stress on the CV. The CV on an IFS vehicle has a lot more work to do. So it's going to move both this way and this way, and it's also gonna move this way and this way for your CV boot. Whereas an SFA, it just moves this way and this way, and then the axle is what allows it to move this way when it's articulating over rough terrain. So there's more strain on the CV boot of an IFS vehicle. And in conjunction with that, if you've seen a CV boot that protects the CV and keeps it lubricated and keeps dirt out and all that stuff, it almost looks like a rubber accordion is what it is. And it just protects the CV, keeps it clean, keeps it lubricated, all that kind of stuff. Those are not very good for, uh, they're not puncture resistant, let's put it that way. So if you hit sticks or rocks or whatever, you can damage that boot, allowing debris and stuff to get in there and making it so that they're not as well lubricated and they're not going to articulate as well. Versus the SFA vehicle, it's pretty much just a metal CV boot and they're just a lot more robust. So. In a nutshell, if you're driving your vehicle like most people uh, on road, for the most part, an IFS vehicle is gonna get you by and it's gonna be a great option. If you're buying something specifically for off-roading or rock crawling or overlanding specifically, maybe an SFA vehicle is gonna be better for you just because they're a bit more robust. Now, IFS vehicles, majority of the new vehicles being made are going to be IFS vehicles. There's still a few SFA vehicles being made, but for the most part, independent front suspension is now kind of king, and that's pretty much what everybody makes for the most part. So you're probably gonna need to go with something a little older, not all the time, but most times older vehicles have the uh, solid front axle design on them. So I think that's pretty much it. In a nutshell, IFS versus SFA, we could go into a lot more detail on it, but I just wanted to do a quick and dirty video, and that's pretty much it. If you haven't had a chance yet, please go ahead and like the video if you dug it, sub to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.